Sometimes I find it very difficult to come up with proper and appropriate ways to to teach iconography and also to teach religious context and art history because students are coming from very different perspectives. But there are occasions when we can look at a subject such as the deity Sitatipatra, uh, which has about six, seven, eight different forms actually, uh, a female goddess uh, coming out of its own Tantra system. Uh, Sita means white uh, and uh, Patra means uh, uh, umbrella or parasol. So she's the white parasol goddess. But actually she uh, belongs to Vajrayana Buddhism and she is a meditational deity uh, with different forms. Now, in modern times, most people know her as uh, for having over a thousand heads and having over a thousand legs and arms. She's one of these uh, universal type deities. But the very interesting thing about this deity in this practice is we don't have any early forms of her depicted in painting or sculpture with these thousands of heads and thousands of arms. We really only have four uh, art objects. We have, we have three sculpture and one painting. We have a sculpture that is claimed to be 12th century. It's in the Tsuklakang in, um, in Lhasa. It's in the, uh, the main uh, cathedral, the main temple of Lhasa. And uh, it has, uh, I believe, three faces and uh, I think six arms. Then we have a sculpture from the Yuan period, which is 14th century, uh, and we know when it's where it's we know when it's from, and we know because we know where it is. It's in uh, Hangzhou, south of Shanghai, and it was um, carved in stone after Kublai Khan uh, invaded, and and he also took some Nepali artists down with him, and then they they carved a one-faced, two-armed form of uh, Sitapatra. Then we have. We have a sculpture from the 15th century done in a, in a, a kind of Sonam Geltsin atelier style, um, quite nice, and uh, three faces, six or eight arms. And then we have a painting, a mandala, and that, and that is from, it appears to be early 16th century. And that again is uh, three faces, eight arms. So. What we have here is we have uh, simplified versions of the deity, and in um, in the later period, um, after really after the the seventeenth century, we're really looking at eighteenth century up to the present. Then we have dozens and dozens and dozens of paintings and sculpture of the thousand faced, thousand armed, thousand legged form of Sitatipatra. So, my main point here is. The, the very the universal aspect of Sitatipatra was just not popular in art in the early period. We actually don't even know if it was popular in religious practice. Yes, we have the religious texts for it. Yes, we have a large mandala configuration for it. And we have a lineage which comes down through the Sakya tradition of Tibetan Buddhism. But we just don't have art to represent it. The thousand face, thousand arm, thousand light. No, this this all comes about after the formation of the Gandan Podram and the uh, Gelupa um, hegemony in Tibet. So it really does appear as this was a practice taken up by the Gelupa government, by the government of Tibet, and promoted as a practice for the um, protection and for the benefit of the nation of Tibet in, in their mind. That seems to be more of where we're, we're getting this art from uh, of uh, Sitatipatra in the universal aspect. So for the early pieces, we only have four. For the later uh, Sitatipatra art, we have dozens and dozens of pieces and she became extremely popular both in Tibet, China and Mongolia um, from the 18th century up to the present. So we're just trying to mix here a little bit of art history, a little bit of analysis, and the uh, uh, using the subject of Sitatipatra. 
uh, press the like button, you can subscribe. More importantly, you can go directly to the Himalayan Art Resources website and you can make a donation because it's the end of the month, bills are due, and to keep a uh, 100,000 images up on the internet and also backed up and to provide uh, security updates and patches, it does cost a little bit of money. And we are a not-for-profit educational resource, a 501c3. So please donate today and we thank you today and we'll thank you tomorrow as well.